Howdy, Kanaji here, and gosh dang it. Alright, let's try it again. Howdy, Kanaji here, and uh, Guys, No Man's Sky 7th Expedition Leviathan has finally arrived. And let me tell you, it is a whale of an expedition. In case you hadn't heard, this is the game's first permadeath expedition. For those who aren't familiar, permadeath makes your inventory smaller, dangers are more dangerous, and oh yeah, if you die at any point, your progress will be reset and you'll have to start again from scratch. Now I know this sounds scary, actually, no, it is scary. I was actually terrified when I first began. No, I was terrified the entire time really, but I persevered and I got it done. Of course, there's a bug at the moment that prevents me from redeeming the final reward, but as you can see, I've completed all of the milestones, and I personally believe that you can too. Now you may be thinking that permadeath isn't really your thing, I mean unless you're one of those people that loves permadeath, in which case you don't even need this video, you can just leave a like and subscribe and, and get out right now. But for those of you who normally play on normal or creative like I do, this expedition probably seems like a pretty daunting task, and in some ways it is. If you're not into combat, you don't play for the challenge, if you're a more chill explorer type, hey, I get it. I usually avoid permadeath like the plague. You know, I'm a regular space hoarder, you've seen my atlas stones. So the thought of losing hours of progress to a tiny mistake or even just a bug, because you know this game is bugs, it's enough to turn me pale. But I have to say, and I have to say it, this expedition is worth trying in my opinion. I'll have a full review up next week, after Sean finally gives me my space whale, but suffice to say that I recommend it, even to regular No Man's Sky players. If you really want a space whale, or you just fancy yourself a completionist, you can't miss this expedition. So if you'll stick around, I'll do my best to teach you how not to die in No Man's Sky's Leviathan Expedition. Now it should go without saying that I always encourage exploration and player discovery. If you want to go in completely blind, I completely understand. However, given this is a permadeath expedition, specifically designed to kill you a dozen ways the Tuesday, I thought you might appreciate a couple of heads up before you lose hours of progress to a simple mistake or a little surprise. So I'll try and keep it spoiler free for the most part, however I'll put a special light spoilers section at the end for those who value their lives more than being surprised. The rest of you can leave a like and then duck out before then. Alright, so as soon as you boot up the expedition, the first thing you're going to want to do is throw yourself off a cliff. Or you set yourself on fire, or cover yourself in honey and beat a beehive with a stick. Doesn't matter, just make sure you die. Because one of the milestones requires you to die, and you certainly don't want to waste time doing other milestones before you do that. Uh, like I did. So get that done early. And with that first death out of the way, now the real challenge begins. So let me share my number one most important tip. If you only take one piece of advice to heart, let it be this. Whatever you do, prioritize survival above all else. Feel like climbing down slowly is a waste of time? Well don't jump. That's like the easiest way to get yourself killed. Think you can fight those sentinels without any upgrades? Well think, they have grenade launchers now and you don't, so don't even try it. And for crying out loud, if you see lightning all over the place, do not get out of your ship. That is like insta-death, potentially, but you know, probably. So everything in this expedition is explicitly designed to kill you. All of the anchor planets are covered in steep terrain, bad weather, and are set in dangerous systems full of hostile pirates and stuff. Hello Games are trying to kill you and their best weapon is your impatience. So if you're weighing your options, just pick the safer path. Trust me, you won't regret surviving. Okay, so now that I've drilled that into your head, I'm gonna rapid fire a few specific milestone tips. On your first planet, craft some creature pellets when you can, and when one of those big striders comes to try and kill you, distract it with food. Then you can adopt it and get some sweet rewards pretty early. When you get to the next anchor planet, Go ahead and put down a base and some floor panels. They're the cheapest thing to build and you need to build on an infested planet for one of the milestones. Then you can just delete it and get your materials back. 
If you have Twitch rewards or Expedition rewards, redeem them. Seriously, scrapping extra ships will give you the money you need to upgrade your inventory, buy raw materials, and most importantly, pay off pirates. I redeemed a slow but spacious hauler in order to make inventory management easier. However, it handles about as well as an oil tanker with guns, so I just paid off every pirate I encountered with the millions I'd made from scrapping another ship. Sure, they called me a coward in a variety of ways, and truthfully, I was a coward in a variety of ways, but I'm a coward who finished Expedition 7, so I'm not ashamed. Now, when it comes to eliminating sentinels, Corrupted Sentinels are the easiest to kill since they spawn in smaller numbers and they don't call back up. And they only have one attack. So besides the usual way of finding them with, you know, salvageable scrap, if you get a distress call for the first settlement mission, go ahead and uh, answer that because you'll automatically get into a battle with a handful of them and they do count towards a milestone. If you happen to find a Sentinel Pillar on your own, like I did, well, okay, I followed this marker, but you know what I mean. If you end up finding one in the wild, uh, go ahead and like sneak in and disable the sentinels because when you do and they explode, uh, those three should count towards your milestone. I'm not sure if it was just a bug that it did for mine, but hey, it counts, right? So that's three free kills. Now, honestly, I ended up just taking them on directly later once I had a few weapon and shield upgrades but you could conceivably just hunt the corrupted ones if you want to take it a little bit slower. Now, in order to collect 10 larval cores, there's no way around disturbing the nests. So my advice is again, wait until you're more upgraded and keep your ship nearby so that you can grab a core, jump in and get to safety. Now, do not, and I repeat, do not use your minotaur to gather larval cores. I don't know why, but when I tried to use my Minotaur, I just instantly died, for whatever reason. Now, don't be afraid to use it elsewhere. It's very useful, but just avoid it when fighting these guys, perhaps. As you can see, I had, like, no... I just instantly died when I got in. So as bad as that is, though, I actually recommend the Minotaur for many other uses. So for navigating, you know, bad storms, gathering storm crystals or even just exploring planets with really steep cliffs and drop-offs, believe it or not, they can actually climb near vertical surfaces. It may not be the fastest way up, but considering the Minotaur doesn't take fall damage, and you do, I'd say it's worth the time. All right, some easy ones now. If you need nanites, sell the memory upgrade modules you don't plan to use. The expedition chucks dozens and dozens at you, and you probably don't have the inventory space to hold all of them and you'll need 2,000 nanites to complete the expedition. So make the smart choice and just sell them. Personally, I sold all of my Exocraft upgrades because I didn't plan on using them besides the Minotaur upgrades. I did keep those. Also, while you're at the space station, go ahead and talk to some of the people hanging out there. You're gonna need to learn at least three words of all three alien languages, and just speaking to people at space stations is the easiest way to do that. You should have it done in no time, like no need to look for extra knowledge stones or anything. Now, one of the more intricate milestones requires you to smuggle some contraband. You can get contraband from pirate systems, which in order to find, you'll need to install an economy scanner, available for 1500 nanites from the anomaly. On the galactic map, it'll have a little skull and say black market if it's a pirate system. So then warp there, head into the station, buy some contraband, and then walk over to the teleporter. Now, if you've been to enough systems, you'll likely see a bunch of player bases on your teleport list. Look for a player base with a name like Trading Post or Trade Terminal or something fancy like that. The trick is to teleport directly to a trade terminal in a regular system without using fuel or risking a security scan, which can get you in trouble with the Sentinels. If you can't find a base with the terminal, don't worry. Just warp to any of them. You have an economy scanner already installed, so once you teleport in, just scan for a trade depot on the same planet and fly there. That's what I did, and it worked like a charm. No fuel, no fuss. And that's it for my spoiler free section. Now before you click away, first off leave a like, but secondly, I do believe you'll want to hear this next tip. It saved my life, and I'm actually glad it was spoiled for me on Twitter, strange as that sounds. So here goes. 
light spoiler. Ready? Now, when you find a memory hotspot, make sure you call your ship down right in front of it. Because if you're really underpowered, and this is if you're really underpowered, the surprise ambush that is about to occur will likely kill you, and then you'll be very sad. So remember, better safe than sorry. And by the way, pro tip for finding these hotspots, when you get to the approximate location, instead of just landing and looking around, take a couple seconds to fly around slowly while looking at your compass at the top of the screen. If you see this yellow diamond icon, go ahead and land there. It'll save you some launch fuel and some walking too. Alright, now before I close this video, I have one more ultimate tip. I'll give you a spoiler free version first and then go into detail with spoilers after that. Okay, so the spoiler free advice is to try and complete the five anchor points and memory hotspots first, ahead of the tougher milestones, and then complete phase five as soon as possible. You'll understand when you get there. Now for the full explanation. This is a bit of a bigger spoiler, so I don't blame you if you simply want to leave a like, subscribe to my channel for more great No Man's Sky content, and then bounce. Completely understandable, especially the subscribing part. However, if your only concern is completing this expedition at all costs, the following info might be really helpful to know. Okay, so you ready? Everyone else gone? Alright, here it comes. So, once you complete phase 5, assuming you close the loop, your expedition will no longer be permadeath. At least as far as I can tell. Phase 5 kills you, but when you restart you'll have all of your gear and milestones intact. I died a couple of times after that trying to complete the remaining milestones, and I never lost anything after that point. Now, be cautioned, this may have been a bug. I don't think it was. I'm not sure. It seems like it's intentional based on like the language at the end of that phase, but it may be a bug. But if it is intentional, and you want to leave the scarier things like larval cores until after you've closed the loop, I think that's a good idea. That's how I did it, and I'm pretty thankful I did, since as you can see from this footage, I died in my Minotaur instantly, but then I jumped back in as if nothing happened. I mean, other than my Minotaur being on fire, but as you can see, it was no longer permadeath. So, I hope that helps. And that's the video. I genuinely hope you'll find some of these tips useful. Dying in this expedition is no joke. And if you're looking for additional help, go ahead and take a look at the comments below. I'm not kidding. I've learned from my viewers that they often have even better techniques than I do when it comes to min-maxing expeditions, so if you have a question or some advice to offer, you know what to do. Now, quick channel update. We hit 2k subscribers on Monday after the last video, which, holy cow, that's, that's big enough news on its own. But on top of that, Traveler's Deck playing cards are now available for pre-order. In case you missed it, Traveler's Deck playing cards are something I've been quietly teasing for months that are now the first fan design officially produced merch, I think, ever for Hello Games. So I'll put a link to the product page below. I still can't believe it's real. Not only did Hello Games retweet me again, but Sean Murray retweeted me, which is like a dream come true. So, you know, I'm going to be living off that high for a while. <laughs> but, uh... I'll put together a behind the scenes video soon-ish, going over my design process for those of you who are interested in that. But don't worry, it won't be replacing my normal uh, Friday No Man's Sky video. Speaking of which though, depending on when I'm able to publish my Leviathan review, the Secret Features video will be going out either next Friday or the one after that. As for the Leviathan review, I have a lot of thoughts, some of which may be controversial, but it's a unique expedition that I think warrants a full analysis, so look forward to that. I hope you'll join me for it. And as always, if you found anything in this video useful or even entertaining, liking this video always helps. Subscribing is another great way to support the channel, and in return, you'll receive more awesome content free of charge. But hey, that's enough sales pitch for this video. Thanks as always for watching, and I wish you the best of luck on this expedition. Seriously, I'm rooting for you. So have a good one, and bye! P.S. I'm sorry if my voice sounds really weird in this video. I lost it yesterday, and uh, 
the way these timetables work, I couldn't really like give it a few days to heal or anything like that. So I hope it doesn't sound too bad. I haven't listened to it yet. I guess I'll hear it when I'm editing. And if I'm editing and it sounds really bad, maybe I'll put this notice at the beginning of the video. So uh, thank you so much for your patience. And I hope you enjoy the content uh, despite my voice. So thanks again.